والسلام هو نستغفره الله ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب الكريم قال اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, reminding us the believers, he says, O people of Iman, have taqwa of Allah, be conscious of Allah, be aware of Allah the way He deserves, as is due to Him. Be conscious of Allah, fear Him the way He deserves to be feared. And don't leave this world except in a state of Islam. And in the other ayah he says, O people of Iman, have taqwa of Allah and speak good words. Take care of your language, take care of your words. As one of the wise people said, don't raise your voice, raise your words. <coughs> and yuslih lakum a'malakum. Allah says, I'll take care of your affairs for you. وَيَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And I'll take care of your, your, your sins for you. I'll forgive your sins. وَمَنْ يُتْعِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا He says that whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, indeed they have attained the greatest success. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praising Him, by glorifying Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower His mercy and His peace and His blessings upon this gathering. Say Ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From whose blessing we are sitting here today. From whose barakah you and me have the privilege to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And count us among the nation of, of, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Different nations came and went before us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us their examples. He says, look at how people of Ad lived and look at what happened to them. Look at how people of Thamud lived and look what happened to them. Look at how people of Lut lived and look what happened to them. Allah gave us different examples of different nations that came before us. And all of them, they had certain illnesses. They had certain problems. And what happened when Allah sent the messengers to rectify their, their mistakes, to rectify their faults, they insisted in their problem. They became arrogant and they start to exalt themselves on the land. And they start to, to deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They start to turn away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they kept persisting on doing what was wrong. Even though their hearts were telling them, this is wrong. Even though everything they knew about life and reality and understanding was telling them this is wrong, but they said, you know what, this is the way our forefathers used to live their life. This was our culture. This was our tradition. This is the way we've been brought up. How can we leave all of this now for this man who's coming along telling us few words? You know, this is a strange thing. And so this insisted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many of them didn't make it. Majority of them were cut off from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the scariest examples in the Quran is the story of Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam, a prophet, sent to his community, a people, one of the first messengers to be sent to mankind. After they lost the Adamic guidance, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam said, between Adam alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam, there were 10 qurun, 10 qarn. And one qarn could mean 100 years, or it could mean one generation. And so there were either 10 generations or 1,000 years between Adam السلام, and Nuh السلام. And in that time, Adam السلام, has come down from Jannah. He has witnessed the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was given all the knowledge. He knew the names of everything. He could name things. He could tell you about fiqh and akhid, everything. And he raised his kids. And from his children, there were scholars, Sheet السلام, Idris alayhi salam, they were mighty scholars who had inherited a lot from Adam alayhi salam. And what happened within a thousand years or ten generations, all that knowledge was lost. One by one the people of knowledge start to die. One by one the people of guidance start to go away. And the other ones that were left behind, they got busy with dunya. And they got busy building their homes and they got busy doing this thing and that thing. And what happened over time, the guidance started to go down and down and down until what happened, the people turned to idol worship. And the scholars explained the way it started is they wanted to remember the guidance. 
They wanted to. But you know what they did? Instead of investing time and money in producing scholars, in, in spreading the knowledge, they decided to take whatever scholars they had in the past and, and invest all their money in building statues of them. <coughs> so they built statues of these scholars. They built statues of these wise men. They used to tell them good things. They used to guide them to the straight path. And then they would come by, stand by the statue and say, this was a great teacher. This was a good man. And they used to idol worship almost, you know, adore and, and, and you know, admire these statues. And the, the generation after generation, the children came. And they said, why did our parents build these things? And Shaitan got involved at that point and said, this was their gods. Don't you remember how he used to come here and cry, shed tears? This is, they used to worship these things. If you want to honor your parents, you should worship these idols. And so idol worship started. And Nuh is now a messenger sent to his people and he says, Oh my people, you don't have any gods except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing deserves your devotion more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing in this world that is worthy of your attention, that is worthy of your devotion, that is worthy of all your energy and effort except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you turn to Allah, Allah will, Allah will show you the balanced way. Yes, Allah will tell you go work and make money, but make halal money. Allah will tell you, go and get, get, you know, fulfill your desires. Do it in the right way. You know, yes, you can have relationship. Have a, a nikah and do it in a proper way. Yes, you can have rest. Rest at this time of the night and, and pray at this time of the night. Allah will give you the balanced life. And, and when you turn to Allah first, then whatever comes after that, it becomes worship. But these people, they, they call to other things besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nuh alayhi salam, the messenger of Allah, came to them with signs. All kinds of signs. And he would preach to them. He would tell them day and night and then publicly, secretly, with Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts and posters on the walls. Every single means he had, he tried all of them. And Surah An-Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records for us the dua of Nuh alayhi salam, the heartbreaking dua of Nuh alayhi salam. He says, oh Allah, I call them day and night. I call them publicly and secretly. I talk to them one at a time. I talk to them in private meetings. I talk to them you know, when they're passing by. I call them special invitations. I tried everything, Ya Allah, but all my invitation, all it did is it turned them away from me. And when I would talk to them, they would close their ears and they would put their clothing over their heads and they would turn their faces away in the other direction. Imagine you're talking to somebody, telling them something that's good for them. Some, sometimes parents know what that feels like. You know, you're telling your kids, hey, don't play too much video games, and they're already getting fidgety. They don't want to listen to it. You tell them to go to the masjid, they don't want to hear it. Right? They're getting fidgety. Imagine the highest level of it. You're talking to somebody, and they start covering their ears, and start making noise so they can't hear you. And if you're standing in front of them, they close their eyes, and they put their shawl over their face, and then they turn the other way. How long can you handle this? How long? Right? Maybe you talk to them for an hour if you're a really patient person. After that, you say, I give up. I hate you for the rest of my life. Go away. Right? And so, Nuh salam, he was dealing with people like this and he went at them, trying to bring them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because he felt like he's better than them, but out of concern for them. He didn't want them to be destroyed. He didn't want them to end up in hellfire. He was concerned. He cared about them. And what happened 950 years? He went at this. 950 years. After all that, he says, Ya Allah, they just kept turning away from me. Everything I did, Ya Allah, it was, it was, it was backfiring, it kept going away. And Ya Allah, now they're threatening to kill me. They're threatening to harm me and my family. Ya Allah, if you don't, if you don't find a way out for me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh no, I have news for you, nobody else is going to believe. That's it. Only those who believe with you, that's it. All the rest of them, they're not going to believe. How many people believe? 60, 70, 80 people, Mufassirin, they say, a handful of people. You know, very few people. 950 years, a few people. Imagine if you do a lot of labor, you put in so much work, and then the fruits of your labor is just a few things. Is that encouraging or a discouraging thing? It's very discouraging. But Nuh alayhi salam, he knows he's not working for the, for the labor of his fruits. He's working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's his job. As long as Allah is pleased, that's it. He doesn't need anything else. And so Nuh alayhi salam says, Ya Allah, if nobody else is going to believe, then please get rid of them. You know, because they're only going to increase in more disbelief and they're going to bring more disbelievers into the world and they're already corrupting most of the believers. Ya Allah, take care of them. Allah says, that's it. They're done. Go and build an ark. Nuh alayhi salam builds an ark. And look how symbolic this ark is. 
Only those that are on the ark are saved. Anyone else that didn't get on this boat, that didn't get on this ark, they're going to drown. And subhanAllah, what is this ark today for us, for you and me? Are we on that ark or are we going up the mountain? You know, saying, I'll seek refuge over there or I'll seek refuge over here. Because Nuh alayhi salam, once he finished building this ark, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says his son came to him. He went to his son, he said, my son, get on this ark. His own son he said, oh my father. He said, I'm going to go on that mountain. You see this rain, you see this water gushing out of the ground. This ark isn't going to stand any chance. I'm going up to the mountain, I'm going to find refuge there. He said, oh my son, nothing will save you this day except for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah doesn't have mercy on us, we're doomed. If Allah doesn't have mercy on us, we're done, we're finished. And so he says, oh my son, Nothing is going to help you except the mercy of Allah. It's not the ark, it's not the mountain. It's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And right now, this is where it is. So get on the ark. And his son turns his back to his father and runs up the mountain. And Allah says, waves came between them like mountains, separating the man, the, husband, the, the father and the son. And the son drowned in, the, in, the, in front of the eyes of the father. Nuh alayhi salam, the messenger of God. His son drowned. What the disbelievers? with the kuffar, with the people that were worshipping idols, with the people that were threatening to kill Nuh alayhi salam, his son was among them. He went astray. <laughs> Nuh alayhi salam, in this situation, he pleads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you promised my family would be safe. What about my son? He's from my family. Allah says, Oh Nuh, he wasn't your family. His actions were not righteous actions. And don't ask me about things you don't have knowledge about. And Nuh alayhi salam, he asked Allah for forgiveness and then Allah says, and we established Nuh on the earth. And we let him and the believers take charge of this earth. And so we look at the situation today. Every single prophet that came, the same story kept repeating. The believers would eventually, you know, be saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mercy and all the corruption would get wiped away. It's almost as if there's a reset button. There's a reset button. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us if that day should ever come to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and your family and count us among the believers who say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah wa akhirul da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbul alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam ajma'in wa qul qawli hadha safun alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam illa huwa ghafurul rahim. I know it's Eid, and this is a very heavy message for Eid. Uh, but as believers, we should keep in mind, even in our celebrations, in the, even in our happy moments, we should not lose sight of reality. And one of the things that always gets made fun of in this culture, in this society, is people that talk about the end of time. He said, don't you know that the signs of the end of time is increasing? Don't you see the sea levels rising? Don't you see the birds falling down dead from the sky? The fish are washing up dead from the oceans? Don't you see how the, the, the temperature of the earth is rising? Don't you see how different you know, er, you know, sinkholes are happening all over the world? Don't you see how these, the, the different weather phenomena are taking place? The massive earthquakes that are taking place? All these different things are signs of the end of time. And the people say, oh, you're just one of those you know, doomsayers. You know? You know, it's like the 2012 movie. They said, so a lot of people said when the movie 2012 comes out, I'm going to watch it in 2013 and laugh. Okay, laugh, no problem. 2012 isn't going to happen. You know, it already passed. But the reality of the end of time, is that going to happen? Yes. And the people in the time of the Prophet ﷺ were concerned about it. They came to Rasulullah A group of them said, Ya Rasulullah, when is the end of time? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by the time the youngest one of you becomes the age of the oldest one of you, the older one, your, your end of time would have already started. That's the end of time, your death. Yes, that's the first one. And then there's a grand one, but we have to be concerned about that moment that is coming. And if we're not concerned about it, then we're not working towards it. When that flood comes and people start to drown, and you're not in the ark, forget it, it's too late. 
It's too late, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the straight path. Ya Allah rahman rahim we ask you to increase our iman, to, to increase our taqwa, Ya Allah. And we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, any blessing we came out of with Ramadan, Ya Allah, keep it with us, Ya Allah. And don't let shaitan rob it from us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah rahman rahim anyone that is going through difficulties, Ya Allah, we ask you to grant us ease, Ya Allah, and grant us patience, Ya Allah. Anyone being oppressed, Ya Allah, we ask you to protect us, Ya Allah. Anyone oppressing, Ya Allah, we ask you to guide them, Ya Allah. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to show them the straight path, Ya Allah. And anyone insisting on oppressing others, Ya Allah, we ask you to take care of them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you to increase us, Ya Allah, in all goodness, Ya Allah, in dunya and akhara, Ya Allah. Anyone struggling in their health, Ya Allah, we ask you to provide for us shifa, Ya Allah. Anyone going through difficulties in their families, Ya Allah, unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Bring us together, Ya Allah. Fix our marriages, Ya Allah. Fix our problems, Ya Allah. And anyone going through difficulties, Ya Allah, in their financial affairs, provide for us halal and tayyib risk, Ya Allah. Anyone looking for a job, provide for us a good job, Ya Allah. A halal and tayyib job, Ya Allah. And anyone struggling, Ya Allah, to submit to you, Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to grant us a good teacher, Ya Allah, who will hold our hand and who will take us to you, Ya Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, Ameen, Ya Rabbil alameen. Aqimu salat.